putting an end to identity politics. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson here. It's the Kevin Jackson Show. I want to talk about these desperate Democrats. I saw this article. I couldn't believe it. I was like, what? I mean, the desperate Democrats. The Clinton and the Democrats struggled with a message during the 2016 election. They couldn't find anything that resonated with the American people. And of course, you all know how it turned out. We won. (laughs) We are wild and crazy guys. Yeah, we beat them. And we deserve to beat them. They deserve to lose. America won. It wasn't like conservatives won. America won. The crazy left lost. And I'm telling you right now, as God is my witness, we will make these leftists see their evil ways. Woo! We are going to. We documented a while back that the Democrats have been working on this message. We watched Hillary Clinton founder around, flounder, I should say, and she was trying to figure out what she stood for. I can't imagine a, 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 a candidate for the presidency going, you know, let's come up with a message. We need something catchy, something catchy that people will want to hear. You know, really? You don't know. I mean, look, the one I remember this as clear as day when Trump came out with Make America Great Again and somebody went, that's so silly. And I went, that is going to work. He knows what he wants. That was as clear that that's four words that are crystal clear. Make America great again. It implies America lost its greatness. You can make that any way you want. When did it occur? You're a racist. It occurred during Obama. I didn't say that. Could have happened in the 60s. Could have happened in the 70s. So it was perfect. It was, it left the, what do you imagine is great for America? We all differ. It's like when Barack Obama said, change we can believe in. Yeah. It's going to be change for the better. It's going to be change. Woo, we're going to get some change. And everybody's like, well, what's your change? You didn't know. You didn't know. But here's the beauty of make America great versus change you can believe in. Make America great again is specific. It gives you who, who it, the timeline is during my presidency, which a goal always has to have a timeline. This one's implied. I'm going to do this during my presidency. I have eight years to make America great again. No, no greater goal can you have than to put that timeline on it. So the Democrats, uh, came up with Hillary's stronger together as she was dividing us. Hillary Clinton was saying, I don't like men. I don't like Republicans. I don't like conservatives, but we're stronger together. Black people didn't get the memo. They were trying to figure out stronger together. How? Well, what you gonna do for us? So they were working on the core message. They wanted to simplify it, but they also wanted to put some meat behind it. So they came up with this silly message I don't know, like change we can really, really, really believe in. (laughs) That was the better message. You guys know we talked about that. But the number four Democrat in the House, House Democrat Caucus Chair, a guy named Joe Crawley, said the party lacks a clear core message, even amid Republican disarray. See, he sees our disarray as a problem. Our disarray is good as Republicans. Our disarray is Donald Trump saying, I'm done with you. I'll do things my way. Would I rather have a billionaire who's got no, whose skin in the game is the same as mine, who's really going to represent me versus those rhinos? I'll take him every time. And the Democrats recognize that they didn't have a core message. I'm curious as to when was the last time the Democrats actually had a core message. And if it's lost, I would suggest they look in the last place where they left it. (laughs) Yeah, it's funny. Maybe they should look in 2008 for that change we can really believe in. Anyway, they failed. Better deal failed. It was as hot as Rosie O'Donnell's career. (laughs) So we find ourselves where we are, where the Democrats actually want Hillary Clinton as their latest uh, candidate again. That's what I'm hearing. They want Hillary Clinton. Have you guys seen this story? So this guy writes an article and he says he's predicting Hillary Clinton can win in 2020. And my first thought was what drugs you must be on 
to believe that Hillary Clinton could win a rematch with Donald Trump in 2020. And they, uh, so somebody even said something like, be careful what you wish for Donald Trump, like Trump's wish. I hope I get Hillary Clinton again in 2020. <laughs> Here's what the guy wrote. Trump should be careful what he wishes for. Clinton might not be a potential candidate now, but the political winds can change quickly. Recent American history is rife with presidential contenders who lost the primary or general election. Then it went on to become a candidate in subsequent elections. Clinton still retains significant report uh, support within her party and Democrats currently have no clear, clear front runner to replace her. While Trump welcomes a Clinton challenge in 2020 he may find himself regretting it if voters come to believe they made a mistake and look to Clinton to rectify the wrong. What? On what planet? How pathetic if Hillary Clinton remains the Democrats' best hope. Seriously, I feel sorry for them. This is the one time I'm going to actually provide a little sympathy and say, I, I, but those poor babies, those poor babies. <laughs> That's what my grandmother would go. Those poor babies. When she would see a mother that didn't know how to raise kids, you those poor babies. Why is this an impossibility? Not that I don't welcome the challenge on behalf of President Trump. But first, Clinton needs to be alive. The woman is ill. We reported recently. Did you see Hillary Clinton at Yale on these arm crutches? She needed them to stand. And get this. They blame the use of these little arm crutches where they, they wrap around your forearm and you have the, you know, the little hand, the little holders in there. They look that you could pick them up. And they look like epee swords. <laughs> anyway, they blamed it on Hillary Clinton hurting a toe. Seriously, a hurt toe. So when you hurt your toe, you know what they give you? They give you one of those padded boots and you just walk a little, you know, it looks strange. Cause you may, you know, she may have on one regular shoe and then that big booted shoe, but at least you could go, Oh, she hurt her foot or hurt her toe. They got crutches and they go, no, no, no. She's not using those. Cause she's, you know, about to pass out, <laughs> which we've got plenty of evidence of that. They're telling you that she hurt her toe. And the second reason that Hillary Clinton might find it difficult to beat president Trump is that's going to be tough to do from prison. Did the author of this piece even consider that? I know the left still believe Hillary can escape the controversies involving Uranium One and Fusion GPS and the ties to the Russians, etc. But I don't think Vegas would see it that way. I bet you if Vegas were to put odds on Hillary Clinton becoming president ever, it would be something like, I don't know, a thousand to one. If they were to put odds on Hillary Clinton staying out of prison, you could probably get some pretty decent odds, three to five, something like that, which, might, by the way, might be what she gets, three to five. They're desperate. I, I can tell you right now, I've, I said it earlier in the broadcast, Hillary Clinton will get indicted and she will not get out of this. Because like Lance Armstrong, the Clintons have used their charity to hide their devious dealings. That's what they've done. They've been as ruthless as Lance Armstrong. It's funny. I went to look at a bike the other day, one of these stationary bikes. Greg LeMond, 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 LeMond. Life cycle. LeMond, LeMond, LeMond. No Lance Armstrong anything. Lance Armstrong used to have this one bike. I forget the name of it. They make it, but they rebranded it. Life cycle rebranded it. They, there's nothing in cycling that's got Lance Armstrong's arm on it, uh, a brand on it, name. And there will be nothing soon that will have the Clinton or the Obama name on it. You watch. You guys, everybody looks at me. They talk about, oh, Kevin, that's never going to happen, man. They're just too powerful. They're just that and the other. You watch. You mark my words. I mean, the demise of Hillary's politi- uh, presidential aspirations in her political career, uh, career rather, bemoaned what the Clintons were going to experience when their house of cards started tumbling down. And that's what's going on right now. Donations to the Clinton Foundation nosedived in 2016. 37% drop in donations to 108 million from 172. That was in from 2014 to 2015. I don't know what they're going to show for 16 because we don't have those filings, but it's going to be huge. 37% at that time was a big hit. They now know Hillary's toast. He's she's toast. I want to go back to the Podestas. Podesta. Tony left his company. The companies 
uh, n- numbers dropped from 6.1 million to 4.8 million in the same time frame from year to year. They've had a half a dozen clients leave them just in the past few weeks. They're gone like the Clintons. And this guy believes Hillary Clinton can run for president. She's going to be lucky to stay out of prison. And I don't think she, the only way she's going to do that is if Trump pardons her. He won't stop until he's the top rated radio talk show host in America. What kind of weird competitive freak are you? This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show.